To understand why this matters, we need to go back to the economics that define hydrogen itself. Conventional gray hydrogen, produced from natural gas via steam methane reforming, costs around $1.50 per kilogram, but with a carbon footprint that makes it one of the dirtiest fuels on Earth. Add carbon capture to make it blue hydrogen, and the price rises to roughly $2.50 to $3 per kilogram. Meanwhile, green hydrogen, made through electrolysis powered by renewables, still averages $4 to $7 per kilogram, depending on the cost of electricity and electrolyzer efficiency. Even with falling solar prices, electrolysis faces an uphill battle to reach the $2 mark before 2035. Plasma gasification, however, changes the equation entirely, because it rewrites the very concept of cost. At the heart of the difference lies feedstock economics. Electrolysis starts with water, a resource that is free in theory but expensive in practice. You need 9 liters of deionized water for every kilogram of hydrogen produced, plus large amounts of electricity, roughly 50 to 55 kilowatt hours per kilogram. Electricity accounts for over 70% of the total cost. Plasma gasification, on the other hand, starts with waste, a feedstock that costs less than zero. Municipalities actually pay tipping fees, sometimes as high as $100 to $150 per ton, for companies to take it away. In a plasma system, that negative feedstock cost becomes an economic credit. The more waste you process, the cheaper your hydrogen effectively becomes. In a typical mid-scale plasma gasification plant processing 100,000 tons of waste per year, the hydrogen output ranges from 10,000 to 15,000 tons annually. Each ton of waste yields roughly 100 to 150 kilograms of hydrogen, plus valuable byproducts like vitrified slag and captured CO2. When you factor in both the revenue from hydrogen and the tipping fees paid by municipalities, the effective production cost can fall as low as $2.30 per kilogram today, with projections under $2 by 2030 as efficiency improves and carbon credit markets expand. In other words, while electrolysis spends money on inputs, plasma gasification earns it. That inversion is the real breakthrough. Instead of consuming purified water and electricity, plasma gasification monetizes waste disposal and environmental cleanup. It replaces a liability with an asset. The more garbage a city produces, the more expensive its landfill problem becomes, the more economically attractive waste to hydrogen becomes. This creates a feedback loop where solving environmental problems directly lowers energy costs. No other hydrogen pathway achieves this synergy. But economics alone wouldn't mean much if the technology couldn't deliver the purity or scale required for modern hydrogen markets. Fortunately, plasma gasification does both. The syngas it produces is rich in hydrogen and carbon monoxide. After a simple water gas shift and purification through pressure swing adsorption PSA, the hydrogen reaches fuel cell grade purity (99.999%). The process runs continuously, 24 hours a day unaffected by the intermittency that plagues renewables. For industries like steel, ammonia, and transport logistics that demand reliable hydrogen supply, this consistency translates into financial certainty. The cost drivers of plasma gasification can be broken down into four components, capital expenditure, capex, operations and maintenance, OPEX, electricity, and feedstock. Current capex for advanced plasma systems ranges between $650,000 and $1 million per ton of daily waste capacity, depending on configuration. OPEX sits around $80 to $120 per ton of waste processed. Electricity consumption, the most significant recurring cost, averages 1.5 megawatt hours per ton of waste. But unlike electrolysis, where all energy must come from renewables, plasma gasifiers can be powered by their own output. The syngas that isn't used for hydrogen can drive gas turbines or solid oxide fuel cells, generating power internally. Many modern plants are approaching energy self-sufficiency, reducing net electricity import close to zero. Now consider the effect of carbon credits and renewable incentives. In Europe and parts of the United States, each ton of CO2 avoided or captured can earn $50 to $100 through carbon markets or tax credits such as the US 45 volts incentive, which grants up to $3 per kilogram of hydrogen depending on life cycle emissions. Plasma gasification of waste not only avoids methane emissions from landfills, one of the most potent greenhouse gases, but can also capture CO2 directly from its syngas stream. The result is carbon negative hydrogen, eligible for the highest incentive tiers. When those credits are applied, the effective cost of plasma hydrogen can fall below $2 kg even today in favorable policy regions. 
This isn't theoretical optimism. Companies like SGH2 Energy in California are already building plasma gasification facilities designed to deliver hydrogen at $2 per kilogram, verified under California's low carbon fuel standard. Their Lancaster plant is expected to process 42,000 tons of waste annually and produce up to 12,000 tons of hydrogen, enough to fuel 4,000 hydrogen vehicles each day. Across the Atlantic, Hydrogen Tay in Kent, UK, is developing a $120 million project with similar economics. As renewable power costs decline and carbon pricing rises, these early plants could define the first profitable generation of circular hydrogen infrastructure. The physics behind this cost advantage are just as compelling as the economics. Inside the plasma gasifier, waste is bombarded by an arc so hot that it disintegrates into plasma, a soup of ions, electrons, and radicals. At these temperatures, molecules reform into syngas, mainly hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Each ton of waste yields roughly 10 gigajoules of chemical energy, equivalent to 3 megawatt hours of electricity. This means the waste itself contains the energy needed to sustain the process. By integrating heat recovery and gas turbines, plants can recycle excess energy back into the torch system, reducing grid dependence. In future designs, waste to hydrogen plants could operate as net producers of electricity rather than consumers. But the most underappreciated element in the cost equation is location. Electrolysis requires cheap renewable power in large land areas for solar or wind farms. Plasma gasification thrives in cities, near waste sources and hydrogen consumers. By eliminating the need for long-distance transport and storage, distributed plasma hubs cut both logistical costs and emissions. Hydrogen made from local waste can be piped directly to fueling stations, industrial zones, or power plants. In economic terms, proximity equals profit. Some critics argue that plasma torches are energy-intensive and complex to maintain. They're right, maintenance is a cost factor. But recent innovations have extended torch lifespans from hundreds to thousands of hours using graphite electrodes, magnetic confinement, and AI-driven diagnostics that adjust plasma stability in real time. With each generation, operational uptime increases while costs fall. By 2030, the industry expects plasma capex parity with electrolysis per kilogram of hydrogen output. Once that happens, the waste advantage will make plasma unbeatable in many regions. Now imagine the global implications. The world generates over 2 billion tons of municipal solid waste annually, projected to reach 3.5 billion by 2050. Even if only 10% were converted through plasma gasification, it could yield more than 300 million tons of hydrogen each year, enough to replace all current fossil-based hydrogen production. At that scale, green hydrogen wouldn't just compete, it would dominate, while solving one of humanity's oldest environmental challenges, waste itself. The $2-slash-KG breakthrough is not just about price, it's about convergence. Renewable energy, circular economy, and carbon capture all intersect inside the plasma reactor. It's a technology that pays for its own sustainability. Electrolysis will continue to play a vital role in regions rich in wind and solar resources, but in densely populated, waste-heavy economies, from London to Lagos, from Tokyo to Sao Paulo, plasma gasification could become the defining model of urban hydrogen production. For investors, this shift represents a new asset class, circular hydrogen infrastructure. Revenue doesn't depend solely on hydrogen sales, it comes from three streams, waste disposal, carbon credits, and byproduct utilization. That triple diversified model creates financial resilience, something traditional hydrogen projects lack. When you sell hydrogen and get paid to take your feedstock, profitability ceases to be hypothetical. Governments are starting to notice. The European Union's revised Renewable Energy Directive now recognizes low-carbon hydrogen from waste under its clean hydrogen definitions. Japan includes waste-based hydrogen in its national hydrogen roadmap. The United States Department of Energy has funded multiple plasma gasification pilot projects under its Hydrogen Shot initiative. Everywhere, the signals align toward one conclusion, plasma gasification is no longer experimental, it's economically inevitable. And perhaps the most exciting frontier is yet to come. With artificial intelligence optimizing torch behavior, with digital twins simulating reactor dynamics, and with blockchain tracking carbon credits across supply chains, plasma hydrogen could become the world's first fully transparent energy commodity, clean from chemistry to ledger. The road to $2-kg hydrogen isn't straight, but it's coming faster than predicted. The last time energy costs dropped this dramatically, it changed history. 
When solar PV fell below $1 per watt, renewables exploded. When battery costs dropped below $100 per kilowatt hour, electric vehicles took off. And now, as plasma hydrogen approaches $2 slash kg, the door opens for a waste-powered energy revolution. In a world struggling with both pollution and power, this might be the first technology that solves both at once. The more garbage we produce, the more fuel we create. Every landfill becomes a future refinery. Every discarded bottle becomes a molecule of hydrogen. Every megawatt hour of waste heat becomes an opportunity for clean power. So the next time you hear that green hydrogen is too expensive, remember that the answer might not lie in bigger wind farms or cheaper electrolyzers, but in reimagining what we already throw away. Inside those landfills lies the feedstock for the world's cheapest hydrogen, waiting to ignite in a storm of plasma. The $2-slash-KG breakthrough isn't a dream. It's a number written not in theory but in balance sheets, supply contracts, and carbon markets already taking shape. And if the forecasts hold true, the world's next great clean energy revolution will begin not in a solar field or offshore wind farm, but in the places we've long ignored. The forgotten corners of our cities, where waste becomes wealth, and garbage becomes the gateway to a hydrogen-powered future. Explore cost models, carbon credits, and project finance templates for green hydrogen development at h2hub.renenergy.com, where clean energy economics meets real-world feasibility.